Courtney Todd, and welcome to my podcast and YouTube series, The Iconic. From solo shows, guest interviews, my goal is to provide value in one way or another. From learning how to succeed in everyday life, to entrepreneurship, and having fun in between, it's time to turn up the volume, pour your favorite cup of coffee or wine, and start living your iconic life. Welcome back to the Iconic Podcast and YouTube channel. I'm your host, Courtney Todd, and today I have guest Chloe Sakely, who is the lash queen in Niagara. And today we're going to talk about tips to create and keep a healthy work-life balance. Thank you so much, Chloe, for joining us. So happy to have you on. We've like been friends and you've been my lash artist for uh, like over two and a half years. So cheers to you. Can't wait to hear everything. And uh, yeah, let's dive in. So Let's talk for everybody that doesn't know you. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your business? Yeah. So my name's Chloe. Um, I'm the owner of By Chloe Lindsay. It's an aesthetic studio in Niagara Falls. I specialize in lashes, brows, both services and training. Um, But we do offer a variety of different services as well. The idea is to kind of be a a one-stop shop. Um, And yeah, I'm also a nursing student. I hope to finish this coming April and then dive into more of like an advanced medical aesthetic field. So um, I offer lashes and eyebrow, both extensions, um, lash lifts and brow lamination. Um, And I also offer scalp micropigmentation for males and females. So it helps with pattern baldness. Okay. Um, It mimics the look of hair follicles. So it's basically like a head tattoo. Um, Yeah, it's a really unique service. Um, It's great for those who have alopecia or anyone who've ever had any scars from any hair replacement surgeries. Um, Yeah, it's a really up and coming uh, service. I haven't heard about that in Niagara yet. Yeah, there's not too many people that offer it. I went to Toronto to do the training Okay. Um, with Leaders Academy. They're a great academy. And um, yeah, no, it was it was really eye-opening, like how realistic. You probably have seen people that have scalp micropigmentation and, and you wouldn't have noticed. That's so cool. And yeah, I feel like that's awesome that you've taken, like seen that opportunity in Niagara to be like, this isn't Again, there's probably some places that do it, but I don't know. I haven't heard about it, but if you're, so is it, um, both like girls and guys that can go? Okay. Yeah. So it can help with like thinning hair or bald patches, or if you need a hairline restoration or basically anything to cover, to look for density or for like camouflage. So I feel like obviously maybe this could be somebody's like insecurity. So Mm -hmm. do you think like a good way to like go about this would just be to send you a message on Instagram or? Yeah. How do they Um, learn more? So yeah. So if you send me a message on Instagram um, or email, Mm -hmm. um, everything is located in my bio. Uh, We can set up a consultation and we can actually talk about what to expect from your appointments and cost and, you know, what what to do before, what to do after, and just kind of show you like realistic pictures on on how, what to expect. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, That's amazing. You. Yeah. And like I said, we've known each other for a while and you've been doing my lashes for a long time. So literally like you're, to, I was saying this to another guest today to watch your business have grown where we started, where you reached out and you're like, Hey, like, would you want to do a collaboration together to watching your business to become where it is today. It is mind blowing. And it's so, I'm literally like your little cheerleader on the side, seeing how much progress you make. And every time we have a lash appointment, I feel like there's always something different happening. You know what I mean? And you've always made moves in your business. And it's like, there are so many people that during COVID got discouraged because they had all the, all the, everything that we had to deal with and everything. And I just always remember feeling motivated after our conversations because it was just like this new idea you were working on to survive COVID, even though you couldn't, you know, do like services or like the world was shut down. You're still finding all these new ways to, to keep going. And it's like, I'm so excited to talk to you about some things that we've, that we've both created along the way of creating a health, healthy work-life balance, because especially when you're starting out and now where it's like, you're, you know, what, how long has your business been open? It's coming to about three years wow. in January. So, so talking about like the beginning of everything to where you are now and how that looks like, like creating that balance. I think that will be awesome to give this feedback to people, no matter what stage they are with their business on what they can do to create that work-life balance. Absolutely. So let's kind of start with the first one where, what would you say a tip 
that you could provide to somebody who's struggling finding that work-life balance of something that works for you? So something that works for me is, so I'm one-on-one with my clients majority of the time. My hands are full. I'm dealing face-to-face with them. So I can't really be answering emails, text messages, DMs, all that all the time. Mm -hmm. So utilizing social media to the full was a game changer for me. And Instagram has so many different tools that you can use, whether it be your highlight reels, um, your put all your frequently asked questions in there. Um, You can put posts up, you can pin your posts, you can have automatic replies. Um, You can also basically set up everything that you want your ideal client to see and to learn from. You want someone to be able to look at your page and know, okay, they offer this, this is how I book Mm -hmm. and all that. So for me, I have my clear policies and procedures of what it is to expect before your appointment while booking and after your appointment so if i'm working an eight hour day and i'm not able to respond you can still get the answers that you need they can know what services you offer without even sending you a dm all that information is that you're systemizing it and you're saving time at the at the same time as well you know what i mean so i feel like that's obviously huge for you and like you said you're with your clients doing lashes, doing services, it's a hands-on thing. It's You're not on your phone when you're doing that. So that completely makes sense that you're going to save time when you can, and then you go back to it at, at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So, okay. So I feel like obviously, like you said, utilizing social media is huge. And then how do you feel about, I re- recently just got a work phone. How do you feel like about having a work phone? I think it's a total game changer. Yeah. Other than the fact that sometimes I give out my personal number in case of emergencies. So the work-life balance <laughs> is still a work in progress. Yeah. But um, having a work phone is great because if I do have that day off, I can say, you know what, I'm leaving my phone at home mm-hmm. and I'm not going to look at it for the weekend or whatever it may be. Yeah. And it kind of like creates that barrier between you and your clients or you and your you business. Know, yeah, anything. Yeah. And how I feel like, again, since I mentioned at the beginning of this, to see you start, like start, feel like starting your business to where you are now, how did that work-life balance look like? Like, did you, did you feel like you had one when you first started your business? No, I think at the beginning stages of my business, I was in hunger mode. I Mm -hmm. just wanted to grow. I was like a sponge. I was signing up for every masterclass online, learning about SEO, learning about even how to build a website. You know, COVID was a dark time for for all. I was able to focus a lot of my time on learning. So from the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep, I didn't really have many distractions because we were all stuck at home. I just focused on learning and trying to get to a point where I could have a work-life balance. But I definitely think in the early stages of a business, it's not, it's ideal to have work-life balance, but you're always going to have that guilt you know, when you're on that day off that, oh, I could be working on my business or you go on Instagram, you see someone else working on their business. Then you start to feel guilty that you're like, you know, having wine that day. Yeah. Or- <laughs> it's the one day you're having wine, but then you see this yeah. and you're like, I should be working. And it's like, how, like, how, how did you deal with that? Honestly, I pushed myself yeah. a lot, pushed a lot of boundaries that I should have set with myself. And it got to a point where I got to a so busy in services that I had to look to other ways to kind of separate myself. I almost pushed myself to burnout, which again, isn't not what we want. Th- yeah. <laughs> no, that's not the goal. Yeah. But um, no, it's, it's a work in progress. I think that no matter what, if you care about your business and you're trying to build something, having that balance is difficult at the beginning, but to have that in mind so you can put the pillars in place yeah. to set yourself up for the future. So your business can grow and you're not so much in the mix every day, nine to nine, 10 Mm -hmm. to 10, working those 12 hour days. So now, so we talked about how it was at the beginning in your business where you were just in work mode and you're like, I want the success. I know nobody else is creating the success for me, but now I look at you as very successful and you're a couple a few years into your, your business. What does that look like now for you, like and just say, or an average work day or like your work-life balance relationship? So while I'm in school, I am working a little bit less, but right. on a regular day, like in the summertime or in my off season from school, it's, I try to work nine to five, 
eight hour shifts. I don't want to push myself past that. Mm -hmm. I was doing 12 hour days, five, six days a week mm -hmm. for the first year and a half, you know? So I feel like I kind of got to that point where I deserve to take a little bit of time off. Yeah. And another way now I'm exploring different avenues, like hiring staff to try and help with the demand and to kind of, you know, have another stream of income that way still lashes based, yeah. but it's not, it's not just me. hundred percent. And yeah. it's creating that team. And I feel like for my business, that was something that was new to me where it's like to see how, just like to monitor kind of like your feelings of how one, how you're feeling like day to day to just say after weeks of like it being a busy week, but it's like, you feel like you've been saying that for five weeks. And it's like, during that time, it's like, I remember, you know, paying my team X amount and just say, only a little bit of hours where I was like, okay, cool. Like, wow, this is so much money going out in my opinion. Like for somebody that never had a team before, mm -hmm. anything that goes out, you think is a lot of money. Cause it's like, you know, it's just kind of a weird adjustment mentally, but then it's like, you're like, okay, you put this money out and you're like, but I'm getting this time back. Or, mm -hmm. you know, like if you had a, a lash technician doing lashes, you have somebody doing that while you're working on your business rather than in your business. And it's like, that's another way to grow. And it's like, I think that's where the, like these steps are leading both of us. It's like, you're always growing and you're always thinking of ways to get bigger. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, you know, I'm good now. I think like, I don't think I've ever heard you say that. And right now you're doing, you're balancing school, nursing and like your business and in life, <laughs> all, all of that, all at once. And it's like, you're still thriving to make a better business and to continue to grow. And it's like, that's very admirable. If there was another tip or like more advice you could give somebody that's no matter where they're at in their journey with trying to create a healthy work-life balance, no matter the industry they're in, what do you think is another tool that you've recently learned or that you think helps you create a healthy work-life balance? I think time blocking is yep. huge. I feel like that's been popular on this podcast. Yes. Like a lot of successful people yeah. say time blocking. I learned it the hard way. It was about 10 years ago. My first job after university, I was working as a recruiter and it was about an hour or two hours into my shift. And I thought I was doing a lot of output, making a lot of calls. Mm -hmm. I was comfortable. And my manager emailed me and said, what have you done today so far? So I responded and she wrote back, okay can you know, break it down for me? And she gave me 10 minute increments from 8.05, 8.10, wow. 8.15. And then I was plugging that same data into these increments. And I was starting to look at myself and say, I actually did nothing <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. I I made two calls in 10 minutes yeah. and I scrolled. Yeah, or something. scrolled. Yeah. It's, it's not even like I was leaving my desk. It's just, you know, mindless stuff, talking to the person beside yep. you, picking up your phone, checking your phone, just anything like that. So once I started to understand, okay, I could actually get the majority of my work done in the first like two to three hours of my shift and, and, you know, already feel accomplished, not have anyone on my back. Mm -hmm. I was starting to value my time more and seeing like how much I could actually get done. Yeah. And so taking that, was that like a nine to five position? It was, yeah, it was okay. a nine to five job. So taking that from your nine to five job and now taking that into your own business, you obviously time block. Yes. Yeah, so if I'm doing an office day or yep. I'm trying to work on my socials or respond to emails, I'll take that day. And before I used to take eight hours to do something. Now I can get it done in half the time because I'll put my phone away. I know exactly what I plan to do in this time. Mm -hmm. And I just try to get it done. I mentally check it off yep. and just move forward. And you just get so much more done that way. Yeah. And it's like those. So you mentioned the 10 minute increments when you're doing your nine to five if you're at a time block, like, do you do it? Is it hour by hour or do you do it by like, okay, like this task might take three hours and this, you know what I mean? Like dependent on task or how do you, what increment do you do now when it's your own business? So I typically do, I try to do like half hour increments, okay. sometimes less. Again, it is dependent on that. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, it's more emails and social media. So I kind of just have like a goal of what I want to get yeah. done. And I try to look at it as, okay, this shouldn't take me more than 20 minutes. So I'm not giving myself more than 20 minutes. Um, but no, it is dependent per. Uh, Obviously with the nursing school, that must be hard as well. 
where it's like, there must be some days where you're just like, I can't believe I have to go to work after this or, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's crazy to see how much you are juggling and still thriving in your business. So I feel like time blocking obviously must really come in handy. Like you said, kind of like, you're like, I know I can get this task done in 10 minutes, but if you gave me an hour, maybe I'll take an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so for sure. yeah, kind of getting down to it. I never have thought of was when you're, when we were talking about creating a healthy work-life balance, you said, know what you need to make and like how much money you need to make to pay rent to, if you want to go out with your friends to live the lifestyle that you want, and then set your hours where, you know, you're accomplishing that. And then that way you can, you don't have to feel guilty if you don't work more than that because it's not like, Oh, can't pay rent. Like, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? You know, like at the end of the week, you've worked the amount that you need to get by. And it's like, and then you're like, you know, if you want to go on a vacation or if you want to do something fun, you pick up an extra client or an appointment or something like that. And it's like, but I think that really stood out to me because it was like, if I looked at how much I needed to make, I don't think like, I'm choosing to work more because mm -hmm. I, I, you know what I mean? I've, I've looked at how much money I need to pay just say by month and I've made sure I can accomplish that. But then I'm like, what, what are my goals or where do I want to be? Or what, you know what I mean? Like those extra things where once you realize how much you need to make, it's that opportunity. How do I feel? Oh, for you, maybe it's like, I had a really bad nursing shift. I'm going to prioritize my, you know, mental health and take the night off because I know that I've already paid my rent. You know what I mean? Where it's like you kind of created that lesson because I, I'm just, I was so surprised because I've never heard it before. I think I kind of formed that idea because I came from having the same paycheck coming in yeah. to then working a job where it's, you know, one week very high, one week it could be low, one week it could be average. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, you know, you didn't know what was coming next yeah. where I was like, okay, what is my baseline? What am I looking to make? Okay. Let's just say it's a hundred dollars a week. Mm -hmm. How many clients do I need to achieve that? Mm -hmm. And that's, let's just say it was two clients. Okay. Then I worked those five days that I considered work days. I worked to get those two clients. And that was my goal. If I got three, I got three. That's great. But if I got two and then I gave myself that day off, I didn't feel guilty. Like I had to be at work or that I wasn't doing something because I've reached the goal yeah. that I you wanted You know, to. everybody's going to survive. Exactly. Nobody's going hungry. Yes. Because you've hit your goal and yeah. it's like, and now, and yeah, like I, like we kind of said where it's like now, if you want to work more, you can save for something fun or just say, you know, your, your dog needs is going to the vet and it's like, oh, that was more than it caught. And I thought, you know what I mean? And then you pick up an extra client kind of thing like that. I think that's absolutely amazing. And that's a, again, a huge tactic for people looking to create that balance because I think as entrepreneurs, people always think, like you said, when it's your day off and then you're scrolling, you're like, this person's working harder than me. And it's like, you <laughs> feel that way because they've caught you at a time where you feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And it's like, <laughs> It, what it's a, it could be an hour. It could be a day. It could be half a day that you're, mm -hmm. you know, having a nice night at home and you're like, now you feel guilty for not working. So it's like keeping that in mind where having the mindset of, I don't need this. I don't mm -hmm. need to go to work if I don't want to, but I'm choosing to go to work. It kind of changes your mentality because it's like, I'm here because I want to go on a vacation or because of this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like, it, I think it's like, obviously because we're very young in our businesses, but it's like, we want to kind of grow old in them. You know what I mean? And find a way to continue to thrive and continue to be successful and not settle. So another thing that really helped me out was setting boundaries with my clients, letting them know, okay, I answer my phone in the mornings and at night on the days that I work and not in between because there's nothing worse than you know, people asking you for appointments or questions and they see that you're posting on social media, but you're not responding to them. Mm -hmm. And then they start to feel like they're being ignored or they'll move on to someone else. But meanwhile, it's like you feel like you have to post because you want to keep up with your business online, but you don't want to ignore people at the same time. So setting boundaries like that is. Yeah. I feel crucial. like too, as like a business owner, it's like if you're making time to do a post, Sometimes you're just budgeting that time to do a post. Exactly. Because you're, you know, you're going to reply to the messages at the end of the day and in the morning. So it's like anything in between, you're like, 
I know I'm going to reply to you, but me just say as your client being like, oh, she's online and she yeah. is not replying. And it's like, who set those boundaries? Do you think there was there any like hard situations of people expecting you to be at their back and call or was everybody pretty understandable or? I think before I set the boundaries, there's definitely was that expectation of when I message you answer mm -hmm. type, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, but after setting those boundaries, like if I'm going away for the day or if I'm at a wedding, which I've done a couple times this summer, um, I would just say on my Instagram, I put on my story, you know, DMs will not be monitored until Monday. Yeah. And that's just me setting that boundary, letting them know, keeping them in the loop because I'm not just blatantly ignoring people either. And I think that's like nice too. So you don't individually have to message all your clients be like, Hey, I'm away. Yeah. It's like, if you're not answering and if I'm this upset about it, I, I probably looked at your story or yeah. I can be like, what is this girl up to? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like, look at your story and be like, Oh, she's a wedding. She's going to be back on Monday. And then realize you know, life will go on. Yeah. She'll answer me on Monday. And it's like, I think that's a really good tool of you utilizing social media to do that because it's time efficient. It's mm -hmm. doing it a story. Everybody's going to see your story. Because mm -hmm. if I'm on the go and I'm trying to, you know, live my life while working on my business, mistakes are going to happen. I feel like we've talked about obviously your growth in this episode and everything you're doing. So what do you think is next for your company? So I do want to keep growing in terms of having more staff. Mm -hmm. I want to have at least a few girls able to offer lashes, eyebrows, um, and then I really want to get into medical aesthetics. So as soon as I finish my nursing, then I can go on and to take my um, medical aesthetics course yeah. and do Botox and filler, PRP. That's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> another hair loss solution, the PRP okay. injections too, which are really great. Um, is that what motivated you to go to school? So I wanted to do it a long time ago, okay. but I, I don't know why I went into economics instead. <laughs> <laughs> Just a different route. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't honestly think I was going to be in the beauty field, to be honest. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know the difference between concealer and foundation for a long that time. I was a tomboy growing up. So I... Yeah, I did not expect this. Uh, my sister is also in this field too. So seeing her- Lading by lens. Yes, yep. lading by lens. I, I don't even know her, but I feel like I do just seeing her stuff. And I'm like, her work just looks incredible. And yeah. yeah, you guys are both killing it. When I got into scalp micropigmentation, everyone said, why don't you just do like microblading? But I leave that to her. <laughs> I, I leave, love that. Yeah, I leave yeah, the brows like, to her. Got... She's the queen, so. For people looking to kind of create that healthy work-life balance, if I knew this, at any point in my journey other than now, I feel like that would help me, especially in the beginning phases. I'm very similar to your approach where in the beginning phases, I grinded and I worked really, but it's like, and then sometimes you're like done by five, but not because you want to be, because you have two clients and everybody's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, you can be done at five. So I feel like it's like, enjoy it when you can, don't feel guilty, but do your best and work yeah. your hardest because it's like, you will, you will know, you'll be kind of in tune with that along the way of yeah. like, I feel like you'd never want to be close to the point of burnout, but it's like, oh, I've, I've worked really hard. I'm going to take a day off. You know what I mean? And kind of doing the, the tips that we've talked about today, I feel like will help a lot of people be more successful in their business and finding that work-life balance. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I can't wait to see what more you do with your business because it's already grown in such a short amount of time. And like I said, at the beginning of this episode, I have been your cheerleader just sitting on the sidelines <laughs> the entire time. And I love keeping up with you on our lash appointments. So, so thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Just want to give a huge shout out to the glam squad for today's episode, true beauty Niagara for both hair and makeup and tan on the run Grimsby for today's tan. Thank you so much, ladies. You can find them in the show notes below and on this YouTube video in the notes below. Thank you so much.